call a meeting to order at, I uh, say, one minute after five. Um, do we have any, I mean, we have, we have guests. We have Theo Kennedy is a guest. We have Mike Pelcher is a guest. We have, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Dayton? That's me, yeah, Dayton Christ, Dayton. Boy and King. Okay, and Chris. So welcome everybody. Um, we're getting be we're getting better at this Zoom thing, but uh, try and be patient with us. Is that is that Mary connecting by by audio? By audio? Oh, that's my thing. The overall deal is worth more than two trillion dollars. Most uh -oh. of that is next seven-year combined budget. I don't know who that is, but please turn yourself off. <laughs> turn your audio off. Okay. Um, and amendments to the agenda? Uh, Mitch uh, asked me to remind you about selling the lawnmower for the rec, the rec department lawnmower. Of course he did. <laughs> and uh, I have a little Welch Park report we'll do right at the end. Okay, so with that, we have Du Bois and King here to present the concept plan for walkable, bikeable Middlesex Village. Hi, Peter. This is Sandy Levine. Can I just give a brief introduction for that? Sure. 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 So um, we have Dayton Kreitz and Chris Sargent, both with Du Bois and King. And this is a presentation they're giving on some initial concepts. Um, for the uh, project that they're working on with the Planning Commission to help make um, some ideas for making the village area um, more inviting to, to walking and biking. I apologize if, uh, to make a village area more inviting to walking and biking. Certainly there's a lot going on in the village. It's been very vibrant just in the past month. There have been a number, there have been two, two proposals for some new businesses there. And it'd be great to get some input from, from the select board, both in terms of what, what you like, what concerns you either now or sometime in the next month or two. And there will be a bigger presentation for, for the whole town next week on Wednesday at 6 p.m. And we'd welcome any of you to join, join that as well. And so with that, I'll turn it over to um, both Dayton and Chris to provide the presentation. Thank you, Sandy. Appreciate it. Uh, Sarah, is it possible for you to give me permission to share my screen? You, I would if I knew how to do it. Um, <laughs> uh, hold on. Let me just go up to the top. And it's the third one over, I think, or the fourth. I think if you just right click on me and make me presenter, I can do that. Okay, I'm right clicking on you and I'm making you or host. Make me host, host. and right. then I'll make you host. host back. Okay, change host. There you go. You're in charge. Okay, let's see. Does that work for you? Let's see. Yep, sure does. Okay, so um, Sarah passed on to you. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Okay, Sarah passed on to you uh, a larger presentation that we did for the Planning Commission. We know we you guys have a busy night tonight, so we're working with a shorter version than what you guys saw, but uh, it includes all the same, largely all the same stuff. Um, and I'm gonna just talk a little bit, sort of give you guys some background and then Dayton, will, who's our senior transportation planner, will give you a little more of the, the details. Um, but as you folks know, this is um, really the next step in, in sort of looking at the possibilities for streetscape improvements in the village. I came out of the what's next Middlesex process, process and um, it's really the next look, which says, okay, so we've got these great ideas that people really like. Are they feasible? If so, what are the rough ideas of what they might cost? And, you know, uh, what are our options? And so that's really what we're looking at. Um, and one of the first things that uh, we wanted to look at was sort of, okay, how do we manage the fact that uh, the road is under VTrans jurisdiction? Um, and we'll talk about a little bit about that in a second. But, um, this sort of vision plan act um, slide is really just to make the point that, you know, we're still walking through a process and, um, you know, if anyone who is uh, 
more interested in the later sections of your agenda with regards to the, the tax rate. This isn't going to be something that the town is going to be making financial decisions on in the near term uh, if the town chooses to do anything from this process at all. Um, you know, there would be a likely be a scoping study that would have to come after if the town decides to move forward, then you get designs and grants and whatnot before things take place. And it could be a fairly um, lengthy period of time, depending on what you want to do and who's going to do it. But we do want to sort of assess the options. And one of the key things, first steps in this is looking at um, who owns the, or who takes responsibility for the road. And so we do what's called a class one analysis. Um, you folks probably know that some communities have chosen to take over a stretch of state road and a takeover maintenance responsibility of the road. And the advantage to that is, is that there are certain, there are more things that they can do because it's now a t considered more of a town jurisdiction. So the town can, doesn't have to sort of wrestle with some of VTRAN's policies and statewide policies with regards to things like crosswalks and traffic coming and a number of those uh, things. So we have two examples in this slide. Um, one is uh, just a state road in Hinesburg, which interestingly enough does have on-street parking. And we've heard typically VTRAN says, no, you can't have on-street parking, but this shows an example uh, over here on the left um, that does have on-street parking. So that's interesting. But this other one is in Randolph, downtown Randolph is a class one highway, they maintain it. Um, and there's a lot more they can do. They can do the angled parking. They could have uh, some various types of traffic calming, um, better pedestrian improvements. And uh, I've got a report that if folks are interested, I'd be happy to email you that we did uh, for VTrans that's um, it talks about the benefits and costs of town, uh, if a town takes over a class one highway. And this just gives you some example. I mean, um, towns are able to do more uh, street trees, decorative crosswalks, traffic calming within the right of way uh, if the, the town takes over jurisdiction. But that means you have to, um, your takeover responsibility for maintaining the road with the exception of a couple things. Um, and I'm going to just flip a page up here. And sorry if this gets anybody uh, feeling like we're moving too fast. But um, so you have this column is sort of the way it is right now. State highway jurisdiction, the town has to do certain things already. Um, and like if you put in sidewalks, for example, the town would be expected to maintain them even if they were paid for largely by VTRANS. That's normal. Um, under the class one, the town has to do a lot more. The only thing you don't do is stripe the center line or major resurfacing projects. It's, and it's completely optional to do one or the other. Um, and so now we look at what the cost is. If the town was to take over the road, we sort of identified this stretch of, uh, a smaller stretch of the village as a possible candidate for class one reclassification. Um, if it, the town does take over the road, they do get state aid, just like you do with your roads. Um, you know, the formula is different depending on the class of the road, but there's a certain amount of state aid. And based on our analysis, the maintenance costs, the, the standard sort of average maintenance costs um, would be about 4,600 um, a year in maintenance costs with uh, basically after the, the state aid that you'd get, it would be about $1,200 more than um, uh, than what you're paying now in, in this context. So again, this is an option. So for $1,200 uh, a year, roughly, you know, you'd be, uh, have a little more control over what you can do with the road. And the reason I'm telling you this is because uh, some of the ideas that we're looking at um, sort of, we have two, we're gonna show you two options. Option A is, is if you just leave it in, VTRAN's hands and option B is if you were to opt to take over the road. So I'm going to flip this over to Dayton, who's going to tell you more about these concepts. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, so yeah, I'll talk a little bit about what these what these options look like. Um, and what, what we're really looking at to create a walkable uh, Middlesex village is we looked at the recently designated uh, town center and said, how do you connect this? How do you make it so that walking from the town offices to Camp Mead is, is not a hazardous proposition? 
Uh, how do you make it so that uh, the community can connect there? And we did come up with sort of these two pieces of it, which is let's make uh, a walking corridor on, on Route 2, uh, likely a sidewalk. And we really do see in, in both cases, whether or not this is a class one roadway, that the south side of the roadway really is where all the options are well held. Um, and then the possibility of working with private landowners to gain easements and make a, um, a nature walking path that wouldn't, wouldn't likely be a four season path, um, but in uh, temperate months would be a great opportunity to um, traverse along the Winooski River and connect Church Street to Camp Mead. Um, and in the state highway walk, the if we can go to the next slide, Chris, um, it's it's a sidewalk. Um, the, one of the key elements that VTrans has restrictions upon um, is they they require about it'll vary depending who you ask and what jurisdiction, but uh, 14 to 16 feet clear zone, meaning no vertical obstructions, no curb, no parked cars, um, no street trees between the center line of the roadway, uh, the double yellow line and um, the edge of pavement. So they need that 15 feet. And in a lot of places along this Route 2 corridor, um, what we currently have is about an existing 30 foot pavement profile. Um, and you have, so you have room for your travel lane and then you could get that clear zone and then put a sidewalk in. And that's about the room you have um, with standard uh, VTRANS requirements. Uh, and so in this, you'd effectively have the sidewalk um, within the VTRANS right of way. You'd have a utility corridor, uh, you know, green strip. This is where you'd try to relocate the telephone poles on the so south side of the roadway too. And then the roadway would begin. Um, it's a very basic option, but it, it could be a, you know, could be a good straightforward one. Um, and something that doesn't require a lot of outside the box uh, conversation with, with VTRANS and doesn't require the town to take over the roadway. Um, but it is a very simple option. If you can go to the next slide, Chris. Um, this is the idea that, you know, where possible, um, that sidewalk could be leveraged with adjacent property improvements. Um, so if, if you're looking at, um, you know, the, the Red Hen Camp Meet area, perhaps right. there's opportunities there as we're looking or across the roadway as some of these new businesses are, are being proposed um, for those sites that this sidewalk um, could be could play with improvements on the other side. Although keep in mind again, we're not really proposing in this project um, significant sidewalk improvements in this in a class one scenario um, on the north side. So then if you go to the next slide, Chris. This the the other concept here though is to really try to make this more of the town center and the vision that um, you know when you drive along Route Two that it's instantly recognizable that you're no longer on a thoroughfare that's a highway that, you know, just trying to get to Montpelier as fast as you can. Um, and that you recognize you're in a town center. And this option has a lot more of the traffic calming elements, something that instead of just still being a, a wide open roadway that might have a sidewalk on the side, um, there's additional elements here. Yeah. And with redevelopment could, could create um, a double-sided uh, town center right across from Camp Mead. So if you look at the next slide, Chris, you know, here's, here's a section profile, again, thinking about Red Hen and Camp Mead on our left, um, and then uh, the, the old gas station and, and potential for redevelopment on the right there near Gallagher Road. Um, same, same existing conditions, but here we could add street trees. You can add on-street parking um, as, you know, the, as more people are drawn to Middlesex and to visit the village for the amenities there. Um, the on-street parking would certainly help with, um, you know, parking happening in places where you don't want to see it. Um, you could have wider sidewalks. Um, these street trees and bulb outs would change sort of the, the profile of the road and, and really, I think, offer a lot of incentive for drivers to slow down. Um, and if you go to the next slide, Chris, we'll take a, ver a look at this from a plan view perspective. Um, and then again, this is just this is the more deluxe version and something that um, typically because of their clear zone requirements, their plowing requirements, I say typically VTRANS won't permit. I mean, we've also heard that VTRANS won't permit on-street parking and we're able to go down to Heinsburg and find an area where they do. Um, you know, if we could go back to that slide that I won't drag you to right now, but I think in that exact example, there's enough asphalt that they are able to maintain that clear zone requirement, which is uh, one of the ways they got on-street parking on a state route, which is very unusual. Um, but this is, this is the option that really will, you know, we believe create more of a um, village feel, create traffic calming benefits, um, and make for a walkable Middlesex. 
Uh, this also with redevelopment occurring um, on the, the northern side of the roadway, that this would offer the opportunity for a pedestrian crossing um, to provide safe, safe and very clearly identified spot in the roadway for people to walk across and not just be dodging trucks um, you know, where they see fit. So that's a really brief overview. Um, we'll be able to dive more into those details and sort of what that integration with adjacent landowners might look like. But as, as you go down here, making this a town center street, um, we also have opportunities to connect this all the way down with, with um, the village offices, Church Street, um, and connect all the way to 100B and the Roots Market. And another opportunity that shows itself here with the Roots Market and the area within the right of way um, is an opportunity for beautification, for adding street trees and creating a little bit more of a gateway um, experience when you're entering Middlesex uh, Village Center from the from the east. Um, so those are sort of some of the key ideas that we're looking at. Uh, I think the access management around Roots Market also has significant safety benefits to really uh, control where vehicles are going to come in and out of that parking lot. Um, and those are the those are the first pieces that we're looking at with this with this project from a from an overview standpoint of should this be class one or not. Um, and again, the, the river walk is something that we um, discussed in this project. We've discussed it with Green Mountain Power, um, who's currently undergoing some, some permitting processes for the dam there on the Winooski. Um, and we've had conversations with, uh, with the landowners at, at Camp Mead and, and Planetary Matters. And really, there, there's additional conversations that the town would have to take up with um, landowners adjacent to Church Street and find out where or if an easement could be agreed upon. Um, but if the easement could be agreed upon, uh, Green Mountain Power uh, was very amenable to uh, allowing for some use, you know, within within reason, some use on, on that property for a public trail. Um, so we see this also as a very good low hanging fruit. That if you can get an easement, the cost to construct a natural surface trail would be extremely low and could probably be coordinated with, um, you know, town supported volunteers. So that's, uh, that's another option to connect connect outside of a sidewalk on the roadway. And there's just a little few shots of where we're looking around. Um, so again, the idea with this process is just to, to brief the select board on what we're, we're working on with the planning commission. Um, on the 29th, we'll have a more expanded version of this presentation to, to the general public. We wanna take everybody's input in from that point um, and refine these so they're not hand drawings um, with approximate measurements, but really get, get into a few more details about how this would integrate with the landscape, where retaining walls would be needed because of slopes, where we're gonna have to move power poles and really dive into that first level of understanding for the town to say, we've planned it out. We could anticipate this much in the future. Should we do class one, we should go this way. Should we not do class one, we can go that way and have a real good understanding of um, you know, the next steps to make a, Middlesex a more comfortable place to uh, walk and bike through. And that's so by my count, we've got about four minutes and 30 seconds left in our uh, on our <laughs> clock. Um, so any questions? Good for you for paying attention to that. Thank you. <laughs> well, I know you got a lot to do tonight. So this is, I, I mean, I, my comment about this is, this has been a long ongoing conversation and struggle for us. You know, the, the there have been various studies done over the years of the village and you know it all it all in the end it all in the end comes down to money and that's going to be the challenge of this for me is all this looks great but you know it's one thing we can get grants to help us do this it's another thing if we're raising the money through the property tax bills so we've just got to work our way through the process but i think having a having a good plan and also having a plan where we can potentially bite off little pieces of it, we don't have to do it all at once, um, is a good thing and makes it more feasible. Yeah, and we absolutely, uh, you know, one of the things that we want to come out of this report is is to have sort of, these are the next steps you should take. And also these are the likely funding sources so that you at least, you know, uh, to the best of my knowledge, the VTrans funding that tends to fund projects like this is usually 80-20. Uh, so 80% state funded, 20% town funded. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, at least it would give you a number to save for over time. Um, and, you know, there may be other opportunities that come up. And I, I mean, one of the hopes that I have personally is, is that if we can 
some stimulus comes down, maybe there'll be some more opportunities for towns to um, get a little more of this work done without cost. Yeah, and that 20% that the town's responsible for, let's say, if, the, if it goes forward, can that be paid for with uh, uh, applying for grants? And uh, I don't know. Is, I'd have to look is, at is some of the state money out there. Just the state programs and whether there's any issue with that. But I mean, I think in some cases, possibly. Uh, it varies. It varies on the We've funding been able source. To do in the past at times yep. is do some of the work ourselves with our own town equipment and our own crew. Absolutely. And, yep. and contribute that way. Now, you know, the minute we're doing that, we're not doing other things that those guys need to be doing. So that's a challenge. But yep. the fact is it has worked for us in the past. Yep. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Can you can you give me back control? Just I'm just worried that there might be people. Yep. Yep. I don't know if you well, me, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and Thank I will you. give you control. I guess you let everybody in. Thank you very much. I did. Yeah, no, that's no problem. You are the host. <laughs> he likes being in charge. Might surprise you. <laughs> so, Guys, uh, thank you. Thank, does anybody else have any questions? I have Michael, a question. anything from you. I have a really brief question. Sure. Um, the that turn on uh, Route Two, where it goes from Camp Mead to Church Street, that seems awfully narrow. Who owns that land? That little bank there. I, I have a scooter, and I and I hold my breath every time I go through there. So what we understand from, and, and understand that we haven't undertaken a, a meets and bounds survey so that we have us down to the inch, but we did uncover um, meets and bounds surveys from when they um, put in the new bridge on 100B, and it looks like a 50 foot right of way. What, and what that means is if we can assume, and there are some assumptions going on here, but if we assume that right of way is centered on the center line of the roadway, that the property line lies just really kind of just inside or right around that line of pine trees, um, up on the bank so that the way we've designed these sidewalks is we're looking at them to say it would sit on the bank, but that would still be in the V-Trans or public right of way. Okay. Uh, so that's that, that's my that's our course understanding right now. Of course, you have to go a little further to, to really detail that out, but. No scooters on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> Not wide enough for that. So we, we would, uh, you know, be delighted if we got uh, any additional comments from you folks. Uh, we do have a meeting on the 29th uh, that the Planning Commission will be hosting uh, that's, um, you know, open to the public to collect more input on our uh, alternatives. And, uh, you know, please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have comments or questions, uh, things that you want us to consider, concerns you might have, um, aside from the obvious. Uh, but uh, whatever you have. Is the meeting on the 29th like Zoom this, meeting? Completely. Excuse me. Yes, it is. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Peter. I would like to see this completely funded without any taxpayer input. Well, maybe that's, that's, a, that's a good but, dream, Michael. <laughs> well, I think that's something that could be done if uh, we get some really sharp, uh, say, grant writers. Uh, yeah. I don't think so. I don't think any grants can roll out of that without input from the community. Oh yeah, obviously input from the community, but but going forward, I think that uh, uh, there could be ways that there, there's no, I, I would be opposed to raising taxes for this project. I don't think, it's, I don't think it's necessary. I think there's ways to get it done financially. You just gotta be creative. Anybody, anybody anything else? else? Peter. Yes. This is Vic Dwyer. I, I wondered, does anybody, of course, uh, it's really nice on this 80 degree day here, but it's, uh, I can remember in the past always was the question uh, of the additional cost of uh, uh, maintenance of that, especially in the wintertime. I just, I mean, I don't think you're going to answer that question tonight, but. You mean for the, uh, the class one portion of it, if the town took it over, or do you mean just up for the sidewalks themselves? Sidewalks themselves in the in the in the yeah. I I would assume you wouldn't uh, the river rock wouldn't need to be plowed. Correct. That wouldn't that wouldn't be part of it. Um, so we have figures in terms of the if the town opted to take over the road, I can you know it's the total maintenance cost would be about forty six hundred and seventy five per uh, dollars per year roughly, and then there is some state aid that the, uh, you'd get. You'd get 3,400 in state aid, so it would be about a $1,200 
cost to the town to maintain the road. Now that doesn't include the sidewalks, so you'd have to. Well, that's what I mean. It's the sidewalks. Yep. Yep. You'd yeah. have to. The town would have to have special equipment to do that with. Uh, if you chose to plow it during the winter time, that's true. But you know, I don't think that not every town does that. Um, okay. Yep. And the, and the state is okay with those with those bubble outs. Uh, only if uh, you take over jurisdiction of the road. If you took, uh, if they keep jurisdiction, the answer is no. They are right. not okay with that. Okay. Um, right. And I mean, that's one of the, the challenges is that, and all, it's always sort of frustrating to just kind of negotiate these things is that you really do want to slow people down. And that's one of the, the bulb outs are a great way to do that. Right. Um, and, you know, because the wider the road is, the faster people go. And so that, that just creating that visual narrowing uh, really helps. But, uh, you know, there are some costs associated with it. I think the state, the, the state also looks at it as a little bit uh, uh, more difficult to uh, plow in the wintertime yep. with the level is out. They don't yep. like you know, wings. Yep. You got to have a 15 so, foot clear zone basically in order to, for, for them to plow. Thank you. Yep. You bet. Okay, guys. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. We appreciate the time. And Sarah, you'll get you'll get notice out to everybody about the uh, if you haven't already about the Zoom meeting on the 29th. Not my job, but uh, that's the Planning Commission. I believe they're sending out stuff. Okay, that's fine. Just oh, we've we we've already supplied them a flyer, so it should be good. Okay, enough. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very right. much. Yep. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Okay, so moving right along, Planning Commission presents its revised energy plan. Is that you, Sandy? I'm going to let Theo do that. Oh, OK. Well, good evening, everyone. This is Theo. And I think there's a report uh, appended to the plan that speaks for itself. And the plan itself speaks for itself. So I don't really have very much to introduce other than to suggest that it's, it's a good framework for some of the work inevitably down the pike. Uh, we had good work with the Regional Planning Commission. Uh, it passed unanimously out of the Planning Commission. It doesn't change any land use areas or designations. It seeks simply to be a planning tool uh, for energy considerations. And uh, should it pass through the process, it's already given birth to an energy committee that's contemplated therein uh, as a way of kind of helping weatherization be accessible to our citizens and, and being involved in the transportation conversations and, so I, I think it's a good document. And again, it passed unanimously and we're happy to be able to send it on to the select board. And, it, it, uh, and we're also, I think, gonna wait reasonably so because of everything else that's going on until March to have a town-wide plebiscite or what have you. And we'll properly notice that at that time, but it's fully in your hands. And if, and if the planning commission can be of any assistance or, or uh, give any further information, we'll always be uh, available to you. Thank you. I, I feel much better about putting it off to March for all the reasons that, that were discussed. I mean, uh, having, a, having a gigantic Zoom meeting is pretty unmanageable. So I hope at some point in time we'll be able to have an in-person public meeting to talk about this. But we'll see what happens. And your point is well taken because the process is more inclusive that everyone feels that they've had a chance to review thoroughly and participate in. You know, we afforded them that at the planning commission level, but I think now that it's in your hands, there'll be another opportunity. So thanks again. And if you have any questions, let us know. Theo, can I ask a question? Um, how many people came to the planning commission meeting on the energy plan? Um, well, the public meeting one, you mean? Yeah. I, uh, I don't want to misspeak, but I think there was just really one person who wanted to give comment. And did you, did anyone from the Middlesex Planning Commission make any changes to the draft that was sent to you by the Regional Planning Commission? Um, no substantive changes uh, to the final draft that came from the Regional Planning Commission. The actual product itself obviously was of, of detailed deliberation by the Planning Commission over however many months, even though we did put our, our nose to the grindstone a bit. But uh, so that, that, that's a product of deliberation. But that final product that got properly noticed, uh, there were no further substantive changes, just three areas where there were adjustments. One in response to public comment about industrial generation, 
one to clarify data sources and one to make sure that the Wrightsville site didn't include generation from Middlesex when it needed to from Montpelier, but those were uh, source materials and not substantially connected to any of the text, Mary. Well, now that you ask that, you know, you said it's leased, and I think the Washington Electric Co-op owns the Wrightsville Dam. Uh, I didn't say at least. No, I, I didn't. Uh, well, in the, in, the, in the hydroelectric on page 16 that I read, it said it's leased since okay. they're leased. Well that's, well, that's a good catch. And if that's what it says and that's incorrect, that's the type of thing among perhaps other items that on a review at the select board level you may catch. We certainly tried to give you the most uh, accurate product. And I apologize if it says that and it's incorrect. Um, but those well, are the, you know, the has to be re-examined because I think there's some other inaccuracies in it as well. well um, I'm oh. sure is that something we're going to do later, Peter? Yes, not tonight, Mary. Gotcha. What we're doing tonight is accepting the plan, and we're going to start our process. Okay, exactly. great. Exactly, okay. and and please let us know if we can help, and any other further corrections that we can hook up the planning commission to the select board to make sure you know which sources they use and so forth. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Theo. I, Mary, just, just to clarify, at, the, at this stage of the game, what I'm hoping is when all of us have a few idle moments, whenever that is, we'll take the time to go through this. I spent about half an hour breezing through it today, and I mean breeze through it. There's, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot there, um, but I think it's important to make sure it's, it's the best product we can come out with. So yeah. this is our, this is I was asking that background stuff, Peter, because I read it and I probably put 45 minutes in it and there's a lot I didn't understand the first time around. Right, right. Okay, well, we may, Theo, we may call on you to come back and uh, educate us a little more on this, but let's see, uh, let's see how we do. We have some time. We gotta be, we gotta be careful historically when we have a lot of time like this, we still wait till we're in a time crunch to deal with these things. So, well, I'd maybe, be happy maybe to with even a little luck, we can start earlier rather than later. Well, I'd be happy to be the recipient of any select board observations and edits because honestly, this document is something that I care a little bit about. And the planning commission worked on hard, so we got to get it right, 100% right. So, uh, thank you again. I'm going to sign off and leave you to the rest of your meeting. And thank you very much for letting us present it. Okay, thank you, Theo. Good night. Sandy, are you staying on? I'll be here for a little bit. Great, thanks. Okay. Hey, Highway Sandy, department update. Question. I'm sorry. Sandy, do you think that uh, they have to vote to accept the plan uh, or from the from the planning commission, or is that is just having it in the minutes enough, do you think? I don't know wouldn't hurt to have them formally accept it. Right, I think it's a good idea. Somebody willing to make that motion? Yeah, I, I'll make it. I'll second that. I did, I, I moved the, the okay. we had a, we had a hard time. I had a hard time hearing you. So Mary moves oh, I, for a second. I'll second that, Peter. Okay, thank you, Steve. So all in favor of the select board accepting the planning commission energy plan. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, there we go. We've got it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay, highway department update. Reviewing mowing bids, action possible. Update on center road potholes, action possible. Okay, so we did receive just one bid for our mowing. Um, and so I thought we, I'd like to get back with them and get them in the schedule to do the mowing. Um, and the bid was actually for less than we have historically paid, so. It, yes, the bid was for $4,000 with an additional 2,500 to do the second pass, which I think we're going to do because it brings us closer to our right of way. So the second pass means drive yeah. around the second time and mow a yes. second lot. Yes, because he can't yep. mow it. Uh, we had put in there originally seven foot wide, and then they their mower is uh, five foot. Yep. So how much is paid for other 
other um, Mo, uh, in the past when you say this is less? We've mowed twice uh, in the past. Right. And and that was running about, I, I don't have the figure right in front of me, but I think it was around $9,000 for a little bit more for those two for those two mowings. Thanks. Thank you. Do you yep. have the uh, name of the of the bidder so I can put it in the minutes? I don't have that right in front of me. You it sent says that. Guy. Yeah. You sent that bid to us, but I don't have it right in front of me. I'm sorry I just about that. I want to make sure it's the same person. Okay. Yep. It's the only bid we we have received. And when when would we plan to do that, Steve? Do we know when he can do it? Um, I don't know when he can do it. We had said in our thing that after the 1st of August, that's when we wanted to do it. So he put that bid in. So I, well, we'll be getting in touch with him right away and see if we can get that scheduled. Okay, perfect. Okay, um, so we, we have completed some ledge hammering and removal on uh, McCullough Road and up on Upper Barnett Hill Road and ditching up there on Upper Barnett Hill Road. We also uh, put uh, resurfaced McCullough Hill Road to a few hundred yards past uh, Vic Dwyer's house. And uh, we'll be getting back uh, to complete ditching on, on McCullough Road. But for this, for this week right here, we're, we're uh, cleaning out none of the guardrails on Center Road. We've got Center Road, Brook Road, Shady Rill, Three Mile Bridge, and West Hill all have guardrail areas to do. Uh, we would like to think we could get them done this week. We went quarter ways today. It worked pretty well. Uh, so that's, that's what's in our schedule for this next week. Uh, and it'll take up the whole week. Uh, we've got grading that's being done also. Uh, for next week, uh, we're going to be going back up to McCullough Hill Road to do ditching and continue on with that and then resurfacing. We also uh, had to order a piece of culvert for Upper Barnett Hill Road down on that corner to, to uh, stabilize that bank and, and fatten that out a little bit. So that will all be a part of the McCullough Hill Road area. Uh, with that, saying that, uh, one thing that we did do, I solicited a bid for repairing the potholes. Um, I thought it came in pretty high. Uh, I did talk with Peter about it, talked with Paul. I think we're going to elect to uh, do that ourselves, which will end up being next week. I'm not going to interrupt the guardrail stuff. But as soon as we get that done, then we could go into uh, doing that and taking care of the potholes. Um, also, in soliciting bids, I'm trying to get um, uh, someone to go up and do a little bit more work for us up in the pit and on, on Notch Road. We have uh, a, a little more work to do there before Fred McCullough can get in there and do his screening for screening our sand. So I'm also I'm looking for a contractor uh, with a big machine to do the, uh, we've got a slide down on Brook Road. Uh, we've gone through the, the uh, water uh, people and we, we've got a plan uh, so we need to do that. Uh, that's about a week's worth of work. But these two items are going to take some money. So I'm, I'm asking that we can reallocate some of that $40,000 that was put in for special services and use it on those two projects. Uh, otherwise, uh, if we can't do that, then we're going to have to come off our maintenance stuff and do these other projects. 
the other projects, the new projects being the, the potholes and the, uh, the slide on the Brook Road? No, we are, we're going to take care of the potholes ourselves. We will do that next okay. week. The slide, on, the slide on Brook Road is one of the projects, and the other project is uh, preparing the pit area for Fred McCullough to come in there and do the screening for a sand. So how much are you talking about reallocating then, Steve? I, I don't have those prices yet, and so I, I don't want to shoot that number out there because that number will stick. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me get those numbers first, and, and then we can. Okay, fair enough. And and Steve, the other thing that's that's in the mix somewhere, right, is is repairing the Woodboro uh, bridge deck. Yes, yes, I, I didn't it's mention worth that. By minute. Yes, I, I didn't mention that, but that will also we are going to be doing that also. We'll do that uh, that next week also, along with the potholes and and then start on McCullough Road. We've done that before and it came out very good. I mean, with a, with whatever salt that we use and the chains on the trucks, it it uh, kind of takes takes its toll on those holes, but it, it lasted pretty good before. Thank you. So I, I just have a couple of things to add and then if anybody has any questions. So um, as I think everyone is well aware, maybe some of us, some of us more than others, um, there have been quite a few uh, snarky comments on uh, Front Porch Forum and other places with regard to our uh, priorities in our uh, road work and work plan. And Steve and I had had quite a conversation uh, with Paul uh, about that whole issue and what I think came out of that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Steve, but what came out of that is what the residents are mad about is they're mad about potholes. They're mad about dust. They're mad about sanding and plowing. They don't give a damn about ditching, ledge removal, pushing dirt back uh, from guardrails, preparing the pit to do winter sand, and a lot of the other activities we do. And the reason is it doesn't affect them on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, yes, having better ditches in the long term is going to improve our roads. It's going to make for, for milder mud seasons. It's going to have a lot, of, a lot of good things. And oh, yes, bring us into compliance with the state rules and regulations. But what, you know, what seems to me the, the lesson that maybe we've learned from this spring is, you know what? The priority items in our work plan need to be things like fix the potholes in, in May if we can, or as early in the spring as we can, and, and other things like that that affect the surface of the road that people drive on. And if that means the ditching gets put off a little bit or the ledge knocking down gets put off a little bit or whatever, I don't think people care about that. I mean, they may in the long run care about it, but in the short run, they don't care about it. So, you know, as we, as we work into the future, uh, I think the idea is to put those surface issues as a higher priority in our work plan. I mean, some of those potholes, as we well know, have been there a year. Well, that's yeah. a long time. And, and yes, we know we need to reconstruct that part of the center road until we do it, really reconstruct it, or and or potentially turn it back to dirt, if it's just completely unfeasible to reconstruct it, um, we'll put a lot of this behind us. But for the foreseeable future and right now, um, we're gonna have issues every single, every single year with those potholes. And, and if not those potholes, new potholes. New potholes. So uh, hopefully every, I mean, this, this is gonna be an evolutionary process. It's not, not something that's gonna happen uh, happen uh you know really it's going to be mostly in next year's work plan this year we're still trying to trying to scramble and and uh and catch up but the other thing steve and i talked about is we have been reluctant uh in the past to respond to some of these posts on front porch forum in particular um i responded to quite a few 
uh, emails, and I have from time to time responded directly to the people who post on Front Porch Forum, but I have not responded publicly on Front Porch Forum. I don't think it's good practice or good policy to get into a squabble with our citizens on Front Porch Forum. That said, I think the point is well taken that uh, by communicating better with people about what we're doing, what the plan is, what our obstacles are, whatever the issues are, uh, they're going to understand better what's going on and maybe be a little more a little more understanding of us. So what Steve and I talked about is, and I meant to have it for tonight and I don't have it, so that's my bad, but I'm going to write a, a very short post on Front Porch Forum, which essentially says, we want to be we want to be more transparent about the uh, work plan on the town roads. We want to provide updated information. And that we plan is, and we got to figure out what the period is, whether it's monthly, bi-weekly, or even weekly, maybe. Um, we're going to post on the town website what the plan is, not on Front Porch Forum. And you can go in there anytime and look and, and see what's going on with the highways. And if you have any questions, uh, call Steve, call Peter. Uh, we're trying to take a little bit of heat off Paul to keep him... Uh, keep him working every day instead of answering his cell phone and responding to emails. But obviously uh, yeah, he's gonna be in the mix in that process. Good. Well, I thought Phil's comment was good too about saying that we couldn't individually respond without having a position. Oh, no, no, I, I, I really appreciate Phil's, uh, Phil's response. I think that's good. I just, I just in terms of you know, the work plan and what's going on. And, you know, if we have equipment broken down or, you know, whatever it is, it's affecting our ability to do the work. We have people out sick. We have this, we have that. The more transparent we can be about that, the better, I think. Sure. So, you know, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people blame Paul for what's going on. Well, the truth of the matter is, not it isn't fair to blame Paul. They should be blaming us, right? So. Well, they see him more than they see us. Well, I know that, Mary, but I mean, it is not, it is, Paul, for the most part, does a very good job about communicating with people, but yeah. later become, become overwhelming. There were, there were nasty signs posted in front of his house a week ago. I mean, there's been some really unpleasant uh, stuff going on, and he shouldn't have to put up with that. Right. I mean, that isn't the way we like to behave in Middlesex. At least I hope it isn't. Yeah. So anyway, I will... So I will get that post up there. Uh, Steve and Paul are gonna are gonna come up with the things to uh, post on the on the website. And Sarah, who do they do they contact you about getting it on the website, or who's our current? I do a, I I do everything on the website. My suggestion, and you know, take this for what it's worth, is that no select board member should be posting on the web on the front porch forum. It only it only creates problems. I would be happy to take one of your statements. Put them on the website give you the credit for doing the, doing that but i just think that P or else put it on i i can put it on front porch forum and say that the the select board at their meeting discussed this they agreed that this would be the approach they should they should take that way not one select board member is posting well if we decided to sell uh like a weed whacker we can still do that can't we <laughs> As individuals, yes. I mean, I think the VL VLCT has been pretty clear about this. Then, and Peter raised a good point, which is that even you know, in the most innocuous situations, if a select board member makes a comment alone outside of a part, not not weed whacking or anything else like that, but it makes this comment about policy, that it's going to be there's going to be feedback. That's not the statement; it's what you get back, as you know, and that you can't respond. I mean, you're, you're perfectly, Peter, you could write it. I could even, I, I'll just give the credit to the Biddlesex Select Board. At its meeting on July 21st, the Select okay. Board issued this policy. From now on, regular updates on the highway will be posted on the website. Here it is. Please check. And, you know, we could even pick a date. I think you just wrote it, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, I would pick a date. Well, whatever, pick you, and I can, you and I can work on it together, but yes. Well, about like every Wednesday after a select board meeting, we just basically take the highway update and put it on the website, or unless there's an emergency of some sort. Right. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. That way you cover your- Yeah, I agree. Okay, the, the, the last thing I wanted to talk about just quickly um, has to do with the highway. Yeah. I'm sorry, yes. Can I, before you leave the highway, I just have a quick question about the mowing. Can I ask that? Sure. Okay. So the policy, as I believe Steve said, used to be it was mowed twice a year. And part of that was to try and keep the invasives down in the earlier part of the spring. I'm just wondering if this is a one-year change or if there was a policy change about that. The answer is, the answer is Michael, we don't know what it is. I mean, we got blindsided this year because our long-term mower retired and our plan had been to either either rent or perhaps even buy a mower, maybe maybe in conjunction with another town, but in light of, of uh, our, our budget situation and everything else, we weren't able to do that. So we had to go out and solicit bids. Certainly for this year, it's gonna be one mowing. Uh, <laughs> And what the future holds, who knows? It, historically, up until how many years ago was it, Steve, that we did the two mowings? Four years ago? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Up until up until four years ago, we only did one mowing. And right. They, they knew was, that it had been just changed. Let me finish. I think it was because right. of the invasives and some of those issues that you've alluded to that we made the decision to do it right. twice. But right. we just couldn't do it this year. And we'd like to get back to that, Mike. Right. Okay, good. That, that's all I want to clarify. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, so um, <laughs> on everybody else's favorite subject, I've been working on the uniform issue. Oh, I wanted to ask about that. Great. <laughs> well, here is, here is the good news or bad news on the uniform issue. What we do is rent uniforms, rent them, including winter jackets, for 52 weeks a year. And that's the only way that the current company will do it. So it's $21.70 per guy per week for 52, or it probably isn't 52, but maybe 50 weeks a year. And if we wanna have summer uniforms, they would be glad to have us rent summer uniforms and pay for those 52 weeks. <laughs> quite a concept. So in the, in the short run, before we can figure out other options on this, um, I think we're going to try and buy, uh, buy middle, uh, shirts that say Middlesex, town of Middlesex or something like that, that there were t-shirts that the road can wear in the summertime. Right. We'll have to figure out whether they're going to wash those T-shirts themselves or what they're going to do. We'll figure we'll figure that out. But it is just outrageous to me that we're renting summer jackets, excuse me, winter jackets, heavy winter jackets for for uh, every week of the year, and they're just they're, they don't have any uh, any any concept of doing anything different. And I know Paul has some ideas of of uh, of other vendors who are out there who might look at this differently. So it's a work in progress, but I'm determined we're not going to keep doing this. It's crazy. And the guys, the first part is the guys don't use the uniforms in the summertime for the most part. Other so vendors. Go ahead, Mary. I say, let's look at other vendors. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know at this point in time what the term of our contract is or any of that stuff. But it's, it's, a, crazy, uh, it's a crazy system. It's like from the dark ages. So anyway. <laughs> Next topic. That does it for me. We are now on to everybody's favorite subject, which is the tax rate. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and Dorinda, yeah. Madam Treasurer, did some did some good work for us with yeah, some she did. forecasting yeah. and, and some uh, and some worksheets. So I will uh, I will turn the uh, forum over to her. Well, basically, as I said in my email, I presented three different proposed numbers. Um, the first one is what is a bare minimum that I feel we can get by. We've 
gone over budget two years in a row. Um, this year, right now, we're about $75,000, just well, about 73000 I don't expect to go over much over 75000 unless some surprise bills come in. Um, Whoa. I just muted them. I don't know. Okay. Who <laughs> um, so this one, proposal number one, gives us very little fluff. That's more or less what we need to meet all of our bills. Number two would be adding another penny to the rate which would raise an extra, almost an extra $23,000, um, which still isn't a lot. That would put the um, overall rate to the residents at a 1.94%. A it would come in at um, 10 and a half cents uh, a ten and a half percent increase on the municipal rate. Um, this is remembering that the budget that was voted in at town meeting was eleven point seven nine per eleven point five nine percent. Um, and then proposal number three is adding three cents. That brings you to a little over a two point one. Brings you to a two point one five percent overall increase on the residential rate and it brings you in right at what was voted in at town meeting for so the increase my budget. feeling my feeling on this is is and i and i hate to say this because i hate i hate property taxes as much as anybody does but i think we need to go for that higher amount the three cents 2.15 percent increase that doesn't seem outrageous um we're getting helped out substantially by the schools for once uh this year but uh you know we've got a we've got a lot ahead of us here i don't know how other people uh, feel please speak up i agree with that i mean i looked at that and i think that the margins are too thin on one and two and so i thought i was going to actually move approval of number three, but I thought it was precipitous <laughs> without some discussion. Yeah. So, uh, Dorinda, just, just backing up a little bit, mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a couple of questions. So I'm looking at the um, budget report, which you sent out today. Thank you very much, the updated budget report. Yeah. And I'm looking down through uh, the projected receipts on your tax worksheet. Right. Okay. So, mm -hmm. for instance, I'm looking at Hold Harmless, which you have budgeted at 60,000. This year it was 61. So right. that, seems, that seems in line. Payment in lieu of taxes, however, this year was 40,650, and you have it in there for 30,000. Is there some reason for that? Yeah, we've got a paper. We're going to get 33. They're so, reducing it. So how I've can already, they go from twenty one thousand? How can they go from twenty one thousand one year to to forty thousand the next year to thirty three the next year? Just because I don't know. Do. That's that's the paperwork that I received uh, last week that they're giving oh. me thirty three thousand. All the budget that was passed. Wow. God love God love the state of Vermont. Okay, well that answers that question. Yep. Town clerk fees this year we had budgeted eight thousand. We collected almost twenty three thousand, and you've you've put in your worksheet eleven thousand. Okay, so I believe on what you're seeing for last year, we had combined town clerk. Um, I, I separated them out because they were all combined last year. Oh, okay. When we did okay. Tax rate. So I went through and separated them out. The only reason I reduced the town clerk fees is because I don't know what's going to be happening with COVID. We've now, we're no longer renting the town hall where I don't know how much recording is going to be done 
lawyers aren't coming in there like they were before. Um, so they're not paying for the extra time. So I just took a stab in the dark saying, you know, that's kind of, you know, a number that I'm not sure of. Okay. I will tell you that uh, the real estate market's off the charts and I've got lawyers coming in all the time. So do you? I mean, we can bump it up. But I mean, it's better. No, I'm just, I, you know, historically, I mean, I tried to look back over the last few years and historically we, and last year we did some deliberate <clears throat> manipulation. Um, but I'm really motivated to try and have the numbers as close as we can reflect what's really going to happen. And you're absolutely right. I mean, there's no way we can tell for sure, but I would, uh, I would add another 5,000 to that anyway. Not that that's going to make a big difference, but every little bit helps. Everybody okay. agrees. So everything you change here, though, will reflect in the bottom line number of what we raise for taxes. So it no longer will be adding two cents. It, it all affects the bottom line. Oh, no, line. I understand. I understand. Okay. And then I, I have one other, uh, one other question here. Bear with me. Um, do we have, is that state gate to highways number a real number or is that an estimate? It, it, that one is it's 115. I believe we're going to get, last year we got 116 and I think it's going to be 117 this year. So again, I told you the original one had a small thing just to cover anything that didn't come in right. Right. Um, so I built that in. Okay. Okay, those are really only I went through the when I went through the uh, the other numbers, they all made uh, they all made good sense to me. Yeah. And well, I, I, I do support I do support the uh, higher increase. In fact, in my heart, I hate to tell you, I think it should be even more. But we got to be a little bit uh, we got to be a little bit careful. She didn't give us that choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got the choice, Mary. We can do what we can do, I'm only we can do whatever we dare do, but she isn't recommending it. No, I understand. What I'm not I'm not recommending anything. I'm just saying number one was what the minimum that I would say we could get away with. No, Dorinda, we I, I think we all understand that and I I, for one, really appreciate your work putting this all together and, and getting it to us before the, uh, yeah. before the meeting. We spent a lot of time gathering all this data. That's right. So where do we, so let me see. So do you want to come in at somewhere? Because these numbers will have to change in order to make that number come out. So if we add two cents can we, can we make the Can we make the motion? um with the changes and then it comes out to be whatever it is <laughs> well no because the so when you plug in these numbers like the numbers you told me to go back and change it changes the amount of taxes you have to raise so when i change the if i add five thousand dollars to the income um for the town clerk fees and say the two thousand dollars to the road uh, highway. That will make you now come in with less money that you have to raise in taxes. So instead of going up, it will no longer be like adding two cents to these rates I sent to you. Is what I'm saying. No, I understand. So I'll have to go back and recalculate all this. No. Oh. So you don't have it. You don't have it on a spreadsheet where you can. Well, just I do, it. but I've got to go through. So let's see. If I change that, and then I. So you want me to just add two cents to whatever it comes in at? Yes, I would well, say. Well, I that. three cents. No. Okay, so it's three cents, cents yeah. right? No, it's number three proposal, but it's only two cents, I guess over what I was originally suggesting. So right. It's, it's over whatever she was suggesting the first right. time. So it's two cents oh, more than the number one proposal. Okay. 
Correct. So, so doing that, it's going to be, it actually is going to come in, and I can't do that. Um, no, this isn't going to let me do that. I'm going to have to go back to the town hall and do it on the machine there. Okay. Well, here's, here's the question, guys. And I don't want to, I don't want to micromanage the process. Understanding that we're potentially building a little pack in there for ourselves. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. And I think we're, we're at 2.1% increase, Dorinda, your higher number. Yeah. That's for the residential rate. It to, on the municipal rate, it's at 11.6%. Right. right. Oh, no, I understand. So we keep that number three proposal, so it'll be 11.6%, whatever she comes out with. Well, I just think we need to, yeah, but but it's it's not going to be that much. It's going to be that much on the municipal side, and I think we got to be ready to justify that. But what people really care about, hearkening back to the highway discussion, is they don't care where it comes from. They care what they have to write the check out for. So it's going to be it's going to be a 2.1% increase in taxes residential that includes any education or does not or you just talked about the municipal rate no that includes the education that's why it's only 2.1 otherwise it'd be 11. okay right dorinda right if you look down the list it would so your residential rate the homestead rate and the non-residential rate those are locked in numbers those are the numbers we got from the state so <laughs> it's all that going to change here is what we determine the municipal rate shall be and then that just adds in the local agreement and what the total town rate is and that so right. um so yeah so it would be on number three we had we were going from a 47 cent municipal rate to a 52 and a half cent basically 0.5245. So about 52 and a half cents. Right. But again, but again, I say, and I know you can make the, the countervailing argument, but I say what people really care about is what their total tax bill is. That's what I look at. Right. <laughs> Well, if you kept it, I mean, if you look at number proposal number three, that is basically exact what exactly what the voters voted in for expenses, 11.59% increase. Right. Okay. So if you go with that, you're covering exactly what they voted in. Mm -hmm. Well, then maybe we should just skip um adding that seven thousand dollars right. in additional income and that's just what that's what i'm suggesting mary just yeah. leave it the yeah. way it is and understand the way it is yeah i mean there's still too many unknowns uh as far as what we're going to head into next year so i i agree let's not add the, the revenue and let's go with number three and set yeah. the rate and yeah be done agreed so i make that motion yeah. Um, do we want this as a motion and uh, as specifying the rate, Dorinda? It's going to be, you want to set the municipal tax rate at um, 0.5269. That includes the municipal rate and the local agreement. So, okay. Um, so I that's what I'll move. Thank you. You've got I'll that, second. Sarah. I'll yeah. second that. Oops. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor of the of the motion, uh, which is which is option number three, not adjusting the town clerk fees or the uh, state aid to highways number, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. There Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. This used to take us a half an hour, forty five minutes. Can you guys just clarify, did we extend the um, 
forgiveness for late tax payments because of COVID, was that just for like this latest bill? We haven't done that for like the rest of the tax bills, have we? Well, that's our next number. That's our next agenda item. No, it's oh. not. No, no, she's asking, I think. So late fees, we extended it for six months, I believe through till August. Um, we were doing it through what the state um, of emergency was. Okay. Wasn't it? Or July 15th, I think it was. Or yeah. I think it might have been through July 15th because he okay. just extended it through August. So um, okay. I think now it goes back to, and if that's something you don't want to charge interest, then that you would need to take warning, I believe. And I don't know, Sarah, would they have to warn that? Yeah. You would have to warn that. I'm just going through the minutes trying to figure out how long that last that lasted. And I know that you specified that it was only the 2019 bills. You didn't that right. You, right. right. It was on that, but it was only now they still owe, like if they haven't paid by a certain date, they would start accruing that half a percent. So what you what you guys voted on was waiving all penalties and interest for late or unpaid 2019 municipal and statewide property taxes from March of 2020 until the end of August, 2020. Okay. Whereupon right. the board may revisit this, the provisions of the legis of a house bill, whatever, Senate Bill 3 344. So we'll have to remind, I have to get it, make sure that's on the agenda for the end of August. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so now what we're doing is modifying the board's February 4th, 2020 motion in posing a 5% penalty on late HS-122, which is the Homestead Declaration Forms, who failed to file their HS-122 by the state deadline, which was July 15th, right? Right, but in the previous motion, you said, we, we specifically said April 15th, but Dorinda made, made a good point when I was drafting the agenda, that if you kept it to whatever the state deadline is for taxes, that way, if this happens again, or who knows what's going to happen, we don't have to go. You don't have to go back and re revise the motion. So we're just changing the date. You're so moving the date. Saying if people didn't file by by the state deadline, which in this case, in 2020 case, was July 15th, are you going to impose the five percent penalty or whatever penalty you want to pose up to eight percent on those late filers? So essentially what but just for the homestead, right? Right. So what would happen now is if somebody didn't file their homestead paperwork by July 15th when their taxes were due, we would impose a 5% penalty against them um, if they now file it. Say if they file it today. Um. We don't have any remedy if they don't file it at all, right? Right. Right. You know, the bottom line, guys, is this is not the time to start penalizing people for any of this stuff, I don't think. Yeah, I mean, exactly. we, that we had a bunch of people that looked like they deliberately didn't, didn't file their HS-22s because they were getting lower taxes, but I think that's a fight for another day, but that's just my opinion. Well, then you're going back on your original motion to implement it. I understand that. Okay. I, I want to know how other people feel. I'm just saying how I feel. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we were all revved up when we made this decision to do that. I think maybe we're in a different place now. At least I am. Oh, yeah, well, that's true. We did back on February 4th. Right. Sure, I, I agree with that. So the modification to do away with it? Yes. Suspend it for a year? Sure. Yeah. Rather than do away with it, just suspend it for this year. <laughs> well, that's and not impose it for this year. Yep. Yep. So yep. not impose it for the 2020 taxes. Okay. So what you can do is you can res what you can do is you can make a motion to rescind your motion from whenever that was. I'll stick the date in, like February something, to rescind the motion. That would be the thing to do. February 4th, I think, Sarah. Yep. Yeah. 
and then re-implement it next year if you decide to go forward with it. Just keep it on the radar. Yep. Okay. Motion, please. So moved. <clears throat> I'll second. Okay. All those in favor of the motion, which is to rescind our action of February 4th, 2020, regarding a 5% penalty on late HS-122 filers. All in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Done. Hey, we're doing well here, guys. Um, other business, we've got minutes from July 7th. Is there a motion on the minutes? I'll move them. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes of July 7th, please say aye. 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 And uh, any opposed? Okay, we've approved the minutes. Please respond to Dorinda about the orders. For once, I was hopefully ahead of the curve this time. Dorinda, can I tell you orally that I approve them or do I have to write an email? An email. Ah. <laughs> um, I, I, so a I have, a, I have a, a, a couple of really quick things on my list and then we've got, uh, we've got some correspondence. So we had an unfortunate uh, incident which occurred. Uh, it was right. That would have been right around July 7th. The weeds, my neighbors, the weeds, Aaron and Wendy, were so frustrated at the dust coming off the town road and inundating their house, and many other people were in the same position, that they made the decision to go out and purchase chloride themselves and spread it on the road in front of their house. And they worked one whole evening putting chloride down there. At the same time, sometime during the evening, and I'm not sure exactly when, she emailed Paul and said, Paul, whatever you do, don't grade the road in front of our house because it's A, in good shape, and B, we just, at our own expense, put down chloride. Well, Paul goes to work early in the morning, hasn't looked at his email, and by seven o'clock in the morning, that very next morning, we had graded that road and flushed their chloride into the ditch. So my recommendation is, and I don't usually, I don't usually do this, but I think, and I, I said to Wendy and she, she calmed down. I said to her, I said, look, you know, to expect Paul, when you send him an email in the evening to expect him to respond to that email and adjust his work plan the next day is a little unrealistic. And she said, yeah, I know. And you know, it would have been better if I did it sooner, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, Despite all that, I think we owe them a hundred bucks just as a, which is the cost of the chloride, nothing for their labor, uh, just responding to that situation. And I'm willing to, I, in fact, I feel strong enough about this that if we don't do it as a town, I'm gonna give them a hundred bucks out of my own pocket because that, that was a bad thing and they were not happy. Anyway, I don't know how the rest of you feel about that. I'm fine. This is Liz. That's good. I think we should. Yep. I yeah. Agree. Sure. Would somebody make that motion? I will. We move that we give the weeds $100 for their hydrochloride purchase. Yep. Yep. You, can't, you, you guys can't do that, but you can, you can probably just designate the, the treasurer to pay out of petty cash or something like that. Okay. Motions are active. Well, I'll leave it up to him. She can take it out of the select board discretionary, she, you know, whatever. That's Not, it's not going to, in a way, it's a bad precedent, but I think this is a time where the circumstances say we should step up. So it's been moved and seconded all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Who okay. said that? Next on my quick little hit list is Mitch. Uh, Mitch called me this week and said, hey, he said, I want to sell the old town lawnmower. I've forgotten that we even still had the old town lawnmower. This, this has to go back 20 years at least when the town used to mow the rec field. And it's uh, it was on the board. King or something. It isn't, a, it isn't an expensive, valuable mower. It was working a couple, Mitch got it going a couple of years ago, but then it's just been sitting over there 
for another two years. So as far as I'm concerned, we should sell the damn thing for whatever we can get out of it. We're not using it. We're never going to use it. And it's practically worthless. But I, don't, I wasn't comfortable disposing of town property without approval. I don't have a problem with that. Sure. Everybody else? That's fine. Just don't put it on the front porch forum because my son will buy it. <laughs> hey, we'll get tell me talk <laughs> in town. He didn't I'm, pay. I'm saying Mitch, 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 Mitch suggested a process where he would put it out there. I don't know whether it was front porch form or what it was, but I'm fine letting him handle it. It's not a big, it's not a big ticket uh, item. I said, give him a short period of time to respond. Don't spend any more money working on it. Sell it as is, where is. I have one thing I want to bring up. It's not this topic when you're ready. Wait, to can we just finish? Can we just finish that first, Mary? So, yeah, I, when we're ready. Do we need to do a motion on that, or are we just okay doing it? You can, well, you shouldn't be making motions of things that aren't worn. So you know, just do it. Give it. Have, you know, do it. Okay, that's what I thought. Sense <laughs> of okay. the board or whatever, like Bill okay. Callum used to say. We're so transparent that when we don't notice it, we just do it anyway. <laughs> Hey, listen, sometimes, Mary, you, you, you do whatever you have to do. So well, my back. last item, my last item is a long, a long simmering problem that we've been trying to deal with, and that is Welch Park. Oh. And I don't know that. Promises, but I made a promise to Dorinda that as of July 1st, Welch Park would be off her radar screen, and I have failed in that promise and I raise my hand to plead guilty and I've already talked to Dorinda about this. Um, the bottom line is guys, the more I looked into this, it is a snake pit to go ahead and set up a separate business entity for Welch Park, a real snake pit. Their annual reporting requirements, just opening a bank account is not a simple, I tried to just open a bank account. Oh no, you gotta have bylaws, you gotta have this, you gotta have that. I think we need to revisit the Welch Park thing. And I have come up in my own mind with two choices. Choice number one is Middlesex pulls out of Welch Park. And we say, we'll give up our rights to that, to that leach field area. We'll give up our rights to the fire pond. The bottom line is if the fire department needs to get into that fire pond, they're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> whether, whether we own it or, or uh, Benderson owns it. Uh, but anyway, there's, there's some work to do to do that, but that would be proposal number one. Proposal number two is, and we would probably uh, have to pay some kind of assessment for the maintenance of the road unless we were willing to take over the road, in which case, of course, we would pay 100% of the cost. But anyway, um, proposal number two, which is the maybe more radical approach, is to do away with the whole Welch Park thing and say everybody's on their own. Go out and go out and fight your own battles. The, the benefit of whatever Welch Park was supposed to be has evaporated and you know, we don't want to be part of the, the fun and games anymore. And then the is if we do that, do we take over the road or not? That's, that's a secondary issue. I'm not asking anybody to, all I'm asking you to do is, is think about this and tell you that I don't think it makes sense to set up Welch Park as a separate entity. It's going to be a nightmare. I guess, wait a minute, there's one other thing. Option three was, I knew I had an option three. Option three was to say to Benderson, if you want to keep this going, you guys run it and, and bill us for whatever our 16% share is of, of whatever it is, but we're not paying for anything to do with the water system anymore, et cetera, et cetera. Then it's the best. <laughs> then it's really peanuts. So there are three options, I guess, is what I'm saying. And how easy those would be to sell? I mean, I don't know, but I can tell you. We're not getting anywhere now, and it's we still we still believe it or not do not have Benderson sign off on all those all those deed changes and things we did. As much as they say they're willing to do it, here it is seven months later and they haven't done it. I mean, it's just it's crazy, frustrating. It's, it's so a, 
full thing for them with all the other stuff they have going on. I mean, ha has what's his name, the Hardigan owner? Has he has he disappeared or is he around? No, he's he's very much around. He's got to rent his building. He booted his tenant out, so he's. But I thought he owned that business. No, he doesn't own the business. He sold the business. Okay. They were a tenant. And then I guess they were destroying the building. I don't know what all the issues were, but anyway, he gave him the boot. Okay, gotcha. So he's around and he's he's available and he's pretty I mean, I had a I had a very general conversation with him about this and he was he said he wanted to think about it all, but he doesn't disagree. This is this is a pain for him too. Well, I think we should have Benderson run it. I like that the best because then they have to take ownership the way they have it to do even the most minor things. That's just my feeling. But so we don't have Benderson. The problem with Benderson running it is, and and believe me, I there's there's some appeal to that. But the problem with Benderson running it is that if they're going to run it the same way, hi Heather, um, the same way they've been responding to all this other stuff, they're going to turn it into a mess. Permits are going to expire, and we're going to all be part of it. I mean, if they do the right job of running it, I'd be all for it. But I don't have any confidence in them. I mean, the one thing we've had in our screwed up system that we have now is we have control. I don't know. I, that's enough for tonight. I, believe me, I don't want to have everybody blow out fuses in their head trying to think about this right now. But I, I just and I, I'm just going to raise my one little issue very much on a smaller scale. Marsh Bauer has sold her house and they're moving to Waitsfield and she may not be that actively involved with the fire department anymore. So I just thought I'd give you guys a little bit of warning. Oh, actually, actually, Mary, she she told me that she's giving over the treasurer position to Eric Mativier, um, and uh, and they and so he's a, a Middlesex resident, so he's going to be the new treasurer of the fire department. Yeah, I met, I I couldn't remember his name. She told me that too. So anyway, she's she going to be on the fast squad, or is she retiring from the fast squad? She said she might continue to do a few administrative things, but she didn't sound like she was even going to do the fast squad. Because she's been the she's been the heart and soul of that fast squad. I know. She saw out two days. She had five offers. <laughs> I'm telling you. Say, so, Peter, I uh, can I mention something? Go ahead, Vic. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up about uh, Wendy. I had a, I have a question. Uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, uh, I don't mean to offend anyone, uh, but how do I protect my boundary marker down here uh, from being uh, bowled over or having to replace it. I've had to replace one. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, but it cost a couple thousand bucks, $1,500 to do that. Um, I put a uh, four or five foot uh, epoxy coated rod uh, next to it and put pink ribbon on it. Uh, every year that the uh, uh, that there's been work done up here, I have mentioned it. Uh, and uh, I mentioned it Wednesday, and uh, I thought I was all set, and uh, then they came down and buried it. <laughs> so and the, the pin is the right-of-way, is the 50-foot right-of-way. It was set by Paul Harrington in 1970, and it, it, it joins with the lot line that goes across to Jimmy Kiefer's. Um, I don't want any issues. I just want to save it. I mean, I don't know more what more I could do to uh, to preserve that. I lost the one up by uh, uh, between uh, it used to be Woolovers is now Randy Richardson's and and myself. They took it out when they were digging uh, back too far uh, in that brook. This was several years ago, but I've got it back in there now. So Vic, I have a, I have a recommendation for you. Right. And this this has been an issue from time to time around town. Needless to say, you're not the only yeah. uh, you're not the only victim in this. And I wish I could promise you that it wouldn't happen again in the future. But obviously, I can't. Yeah. What I did was what I did was I went to where my pins were, and I measured 25 feet back 
and I put a pin there. Yeah. And Last I know where that pin is, and I can put the other pin back pretty easily if heaven forbid I ever need to. My pen, my pins have now all disappeared. That's exactly a good idea, but I don't want to give the town any more property than I already have, unless they want to come up and reassess it, drop it off a couple hundred thousand bucks on my assessment, and then I'd be happy. No, I'm, uh, I'm not. It's not, our, Nick, it's not our, just understand, it's not our intent to go outside the right of way. And yeah. in my case, in my case, the pin was, my pin was actually in the right of way. But whatever it is, I'm just saying. My pin is not in the right of way. Oh. Right, I, I, I get it, but I'm just. I'm going to sign off if this is going to be a personal issue. Wait. So, are there any other well, business? Well, I just wanted to get it documented. Issue, but Victor, in the town, in the town if you, minutes. If you want to discuss this further, you should you should get on the agenda for a, okay. for a meeting in the future, and we can talk about it. But that's the way I that's the way I solve the problem. I know it's not perfect. I know all the issues about you know town roads expanding dirt getting pushed out of the right of way i understand all that we try not to do it but it happens and you know it is it is what it is i'm not i'm not i'm not asking for forgiveness and i understand your frustration but uh if you if you if you put those if you set those pins back that makes it very easy to put a to put a pin in the future and it also means you know exactly where you're uh where your surveyed pin should be. So that's just my thought. That isn't town policy. That isn't anything. That was my way of uh, solving a problem. Is okay. there any Can we set that up for uh, next meeting? Yes. OK. And at the same time, I'd like to talk about a culvert, a curb cut. Okay, well, I, would, I would say you should talk about that at the next meeting also, OK? OK. Uh, the only problem with that is the town may be up there uh, uh, ripping that out uh, before uh, the next meeting, and I've I've dug it out, and it's in. It, it, I can't I can't take it out. Um, I can't dig it and leave it because uh, the town has buried uh, when they put that material in from Molly Supel, they buried it up in the ditch. They again have pushed the town road four or five feet over on my property. Victor. Here's, here's the thing, and I'm sorry about this, but you know we can't take any action without having a warrant. So I'm not. I'm just asking you what to do. So you've told me what to do. Peter, if if it's okay, could I just jump in here and Vic? Could I did did you end up talking to to Steve about the property pin and the culvert? I've talked to everybody, and 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 I understand, Paul. You are really busy. You don't have time to get out of that excavator. And walk up and talk to me. I understand that. I just but I but you have well with the property pit in Vic. The only thing I I just want to say so it's on the record as well. I I was never notified about that, and and to my knowledge, Steve wasn't either. Okay. Well, that's so that that would that would be a good starting place at least for us is to talk to either Steve and I who who run the highway department. I understand that, but I've done that, and I've told you about that culvert two or three times. And and but there's no communication to the to the greater operator, and he just goes and does his thing, like what happened at Wendy's. And I don't mean to. I'm not trying to throw you on the bus. I'm just asking for a solution that works. That's all. Vic, this is Steve. You did talk to me about those culverts, and and I did talk with Paul about that, and and yeah. we we will work on that when we come up through doing our ditching. As okay. far as the survey point, I, I knew nothing about it. However, um, why don't why don't we get together tomorrow and talk about that? Very good. Thank you for doing that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else, anyone? Oh, well, we have correspondence. I'm sorry. We, we have COVID. Yeah, COVID too. No, no, no. Too. Yeah, that's right. Just the, I just think that these people need a letter. I mean, they've wrote the select board a letter complaining about the people gathering on. Shady Real Road down by the swimming holes. I realize it's state land. I did talk to them, but I but I I promised them that I would bring this to the select board so that you guys could just respond. Uh, if you would just write a letter emphasizing that we have no control over the state park and in terms of the swimming hole, which is farther up the road, I don't even know whose land that is. Do we know, Sarah? Well, I mean, part of it is Mike Patterson's. I suppose there's some road right. I think what they're talking about is going back to the road right of way. You know, there's uh, 
the, the, the town does have a right of way there where people are parking. And I, uh, I tried to explain that enforcement was non-existent. We don't have a kid, we don't have a, a, you know, a constable. We don't have people who were able to patrol that area, but that is, that's what she's talking about is the. Right, I, know. I, I, well, I guess what I would say is if she has a, <laughs> you're right. We have no, we have no ability to do anything about that. And we're sorry. But if she's staying in her house and she's staying 100 feet away from that, I don't think she's a risk. I am one of the swimmers who goes there on a regular basis and people are with their families and they stay apart from other people. We're not wearing masks in the water, but we're not near people. We don't like get close to people that are there. Um, and go to Wrightsville. You'll see close people there. <laughs> right. All right. Well, I just I, I did I did respond to her uh, by a uh, just an email directly to her. She didn't respond back to me. I told her that. So I, I guess what what I'm suggesting is, Sarah, you just say it was it was discussed at the select board meeting, and there's unfortunately nothing further we can do at this time. Something like that. Send it out to her. Okay. Well, you, you could also put in writing that the state owned, you know, we don't have any control over the state park and, and uh, we don't have enforcement over any right of way we might have next to the road. So it's in, it's in writing. You probably told her that already. I, well, did, I, I don't think she needs to think that if we did have control, we would be stopping everyone from going to the swimming holes. Right. That's I not going to happen. No, should, nor should it happen. Right. So don't like say, oh, sorry, we would, but we can't. So just- I didn't say that. I just said we can't. <laughs> Unfortunately, like a lot of these things, go to the market and see all the people without masks going the wrong way up the aisles. I had some silver haired octogenarian <laughs> scream at me when I had passed her three times in a row going the wrong way and <laughs> asked her politely to go the right way. And she told me she'd been shopping that way for 40 years and she wasn't changing and she didn't give a damn what I thought. <laughs> Not very nice. Was that Price Chopper or was that Shaw's? <laughs> that was Shaw's. But I, I mean, I, no, what do you do? Call the police? No. It, it is what it is. The guys, I got to go. Oh, people go. Who take your temperature right here in the middle of your forehead. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring Liz over. She can, she can control them. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have the a sense market, The food about. market police. <laughs> okay, good night, everyone. I'm adjourning the meeting. Okay, don't forget you have a BCA meeting next Tuesday at this time. I'm sorry. Just don't forget. You have You'll a remind us, though, right? Wait, B BCA is next Tuesday at 5? Correct. Yes. Tuesday the 28th? That's right. You've got a, you've got a property hearing involving a million-dollar property plus. Whoops, is that? Mary, this isn't the BCA meeting. I just asked a question. Whose is it? We got to get it Scott and, from it. Gre Scott and Gretchen Bowden's at 67 Zedon Road. Okay, gotcha. All right, thank you. See you guys. Have a good, good night. Good night, everybody.